Are you a single planer? Let's have a conversation about that. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. And today, you guessed it, I'm talking about the single plane golf swing. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that over the course of the last couple of years, I have reviewed several different swings and this is going to be my next attempt at an in-depth review i've had a lot of you guys over the course of the last couple of years on so many of my videos tell me you gotta try the single plane swing and at long last that time has come today this video will jump off my review of the single plane golf swing as developed and created by mo norman and then the different iterations down through time that that people have built from what mo norman's swing was Let's get into it. In this first video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I believe the single plane swing is versus other swings. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Mo Norman. I'm gonna show you some video on course where I made my first attempt. I played six holes with the single plane swing, at least the beginning of a single plane swing. It's not developed yet, you gotta remember. These are my first attempts. This is the jump off video, so please don't destroy me in the comments section. So before we take this out on the virtual driving range and I'll show you some clips from on course, what is the single plane swing? Well, I've watched lots of Todd Graves and Kirk Younga videos. Uh, I've seen all the Mo Norman footage that I can get my hands on. Why I haven't tried the single plane swing up until now. Once you go down this rabbit hole, it may be hard to come out of it. You have to deprogram conventional to get into these uh, unique, let's just say, ways of swinging the golf club. But the single plane swing, as, as far as what I can understand from Mo and Kirk and, and Todd Graves, is that you're setting the club on its preset position to be that one plane that you want it to come in and impact the golf ball. Instead of the conventional golf setup, which has your arms hang down, and then your golf club, and you're starting off on one plane, and then throughout you're making a series of movements and compensations in order to get you to an impact arms extended position. We're starting off that way, and we're just maintaining it with that single plane. It is supposed to, to produce straight shots. Now, Ben Hogan always said that a straight shot was an accident. It was a fluke, it was an anomaly. That your ball is going to want to curve left or curve right on every shot, even if it's minute. So for it to go perfectly straight was an accident. Mo Norman, on the other hand, said, every shot I ever hit was straight. I hit straight shots all the time and the draws and fades were accidents. So who's correct? You're talking about two of the greatest ball strikers in the history of planet Earth. Both of them have opposing positions as to what is the norm and what is the anomaly. Mo is of course the innovator of this entire movement. There are quite a few people who are single planers and who follow the type of swing that he laid out. But Mo Norman himself, if you go back and you look at his swing and you listen to what he has to say, I've got a theory about how he developed this. He always said that he, he developed it from the time he was about 14 until about the time he was 19 or 20 years old. But if you think about the time before he was 14 years old, what was happening there? Did he just not play golf and all of a sudden he picked up a club and this is exactly the way he set up to hit it? Or was this something that developed over time from the time he picked up the golf clubs until he was 14 and he said, that's it, and started to develop this magical positioning and setup? If you take a look at the way he swings and you take a look at the way he sets up, the way he holds the golf club, the movements that he makes, it looks like to me, instinctively, as a young man, he was trying to get to limits. He was trying to eliminate variables. His legs are straight. If you bend your knees, how much do you bend your knees? Do you bend them a lot? Do you bend them a little? Do you bend them somewhere in the middle? Mo said, hey, if you want to control it and you want to eliminate any possibility of any sort of inconsistencies, just make your legs straight. So he did. His wide stance. Why does he do that? Stability. If you have your feet closer together, your legs are closer together, you're a lot more off balance, it's harder to maintain your balance, but if you make your legs really wide, you're stable and it takes so much less effort to balance and stay in one spot. The next component, and this is the big one, the hands and the arms and the club completely outstretched. Again, to their limits. 
to the limit. So there is no possibility of bending your arms. There is no possibility of having a different angle between the club shaft and your arms. There's no room for error. And I think instinctively as a young man, he figured that out and said, you know what? Every time I come up to set up to the ball, I'm different. Every time I make impact, I'm different. All of the movements that I make during the swing, they're different. How can I make them all the same? And so I think he came across this and said, you know what? If I start everything out and I can't move them, I can't change them then that should give me a very repeatable swing and then I can practice it and get better with it and make that swing work and it should be a much more repeatable and dependable golf swing. Now I think it's important to note that that is just my theory. I have not read anything, seen anything, heard anything that tells me that what I just said was true. Those are my theories. It, it, it's just the way that I think it must have come about through trial and error trying to figure out a way to make everything simple, repeatable, so that he could not get out of position. The pros and cons for the single plane swing, they, they probably vary from person to person, but let's take a look at what is common, what is commonly talked about in circles of people discussing the single plane golf swing. Number one is that it produces consistent, straight ball flight. Number two, it's a very simple setup and number three, it is easily repeatable, almost machine-like. Some of the cons you may hear about are that it can cost you distance. Another con could be that it's a completely different way of setting up and swinging at the golf ball, so it may be really alien and foreign to you. And of course, the biggest con for almost everybody out there who does not want to try the single plane swing, the number one thing on their list is that they say you look ridiculous. Now, if you've watched a lot of Mo Norman videos, some footage from in the past, like the 80s and 90s, like I've watched, and you've watched it multiple times, you'll know that there's a part in one of those videos where he, he kind of makes his setup to the golf ball, and he says, you look at me here at setup, and I look like a 120 shooter, but once I move, oh, or as Mo says, oh, let me ask you this as a fundamental question. If you look ridiculous, but you can play scratch golf, is that a trade-off you're willing to accept? For me, you tell me I can play scratch golf with this? Yeah, I'm in. I don't care what anybody's got to say. I'm gonna go out and whoop their ass on a golf course. Now let's talk about on course. I decided to play the last six holes of a round of golf that I was playing as Mo Norman. I said, you know what, let's just see what we get. Let's take this swing out on course and let's just be instinctive about it. No, no formal training, no long time practicing with it, no real technique developed. Let's just go out and attack it like I think Mo must have attacked it. Put your arms out straight, make your legs wide. Don't change your position, get after it, stay in your spot and just make it really simple and shake hands with a flag stick. For those six holes, I was one under par. Birdied the very first hole that I played with it, which was a par five. The next five holes was a par four, par four, par four, par four, and then a par three to finish up parred every one of those holes. I hit every fairway with my driver. Every fairway. Some of these holes are tight as well, mind you. And every one of them was probably longer than my average. So that whole thing about you losing a little bit of distance, that was not my experience. I hit four out of six greens, one of which I missed by literally two or three steps to the left of the green just because I tugged it just a little bit. And then on the last hole, the 18th, I had a pitching wedge on the par three, and it was this beautiful, high towering, perfectly dead straight shot that I just happened to pull a little bit left into the bunker, but I got out of the bunker, made my par. So one under for six holes, my yardages were either spot on or they were a little bit longer. The joy, the magic that I felt on course after every shot, I was laughing out loud, playing by myself, pushing my cart down the fairway, and after I hit a shot, I would just bust out laughing. It was unbelievable. It was a magical experience on course. And I had to keep asking myself the question, why have you not tried this before now, you moron? So I wanna wrap this video up by giving some of the key points that I found that helped me. Some of the things that that Kirk or, or Todd Graves or Mo or any other single plane teachers out there may talk about from time to time. Some of the things that I found that made a huge difference in my single plane swing in the first week or two. One of those is definitely don't be scared to get too far away from the ball. And I say too far in air quotes because 
what a lot of people would deem to be too far away from the ball may actually be just right. So don't be scared to get out there and reach for the ball and stand away from it to feel like you have to almost swing out to get it. You don't want to lean out to get it, but you want to swing out to get it, get that extension. That's part of it is to go to your limits and extend all the way out. And you can play around with that. But if it's going to be close to you, it's going to be too hard for you to get that one plane going. It's going to be hard to get that consistency. So one of the keys is definitely to get the ball out away from you and really really get that stretch. Number two, and I think this might be a common misconception. I had this misconception myself, but if you listen to some of the coaches out there talking about it, a lot of people are trying to align the shaft with their left arm. But for me, if I can get my right arm to be on the same plane as that shaft and then get the tilt, the spine tilt back to where I feel like I'm delivering back into it almost like a hammer, that made a huge difference. So for me, one of my keys is align the right arm, not the left arm. Another one comes from Mo himself. Somebody asked Mo in one of his videos, Mo, when you were striking the ball the best, what was your swing thought? And he said, stay with the shot. It, stay with the shot. That's pretty much exactly how he said it. Stay with the shot, stay through it. And then when he demonstrated, he showed how all of his momentum and everything was still going down the target line toward the target. And that, that is a very common phrase that you hear a lot of people talk about is staying with the shot. That, that's a huge one. Stay through and with the shot the whole time. It makes a big difference. So you're not swinging at it, you're swinging through the shot. And the last one, this was the biggest one for me that makes the difference in the distance, the consistency, the repeatability, all of it, is what I think Mo called the buckle and sit. There was like a four, uh, a four-word phrase that he he used to help him remember, but the buckle and sit, buckle that left knee forward and really sit, sit into the shot. That's another thing Mo talked about a lot was really sitting into the shot that he and Ben Hogan did that so well. I don't know if maybe the importance of that has been stressed quite enough, but if you sit into it and you really get that deep knee bend and you go down to get the ball, he always talked about never get taller to get shorter, to go down and get the ball. If you can do that, that really gives you that compression and that drive forward. If you buckle that left knee and you sit and let everything happen in front of you as if the club and all of it is passing in front of you on the way out to the left side of your body, that can make an extremely huge difference. Guys, this has just been an overview. I know that this is not all encompassing. I know that I don't have a lot of hitting shots on here and you wanna see my setup, you wanna see me hit shots, but I would say to subscribe to the channel because in the next videos, I will be showing you a lot more of that out here, how I'm setting up, how it's progressing, talking about some of the faults and swing flaws that I am able to, to get rid of with the single plane method. All of those things, I'll be doing more in depth in the videos to come, so stick around and watch. This is just the introduction to this swing review series. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and so far, the results have been incredible. They've been magical. It's just made me so happy and taken so much stress off of me that it's unbelievable. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below. Leave me some comments. It really helps the channel out, and I will see you in the next video.